To be or not to be, that is the question. Am I willing to change my inner guard, my old habits and ideas, with a new vision, a new creation of myself in the world? It may seem difficult to be open at times with new messages we receive every single minute. But there is a guard at the gate, an inner guard that seeks safety, keeps us aware of all our surroundings, and makes sure that everything we do and don't do, along with self-talk, is limited in order to keep ourselves safe and comfy. We are called to be willing to get beyond our resistances in order to grow and to have a more fulfilling life. With all that, we still invent thoughts that keep us stressed and worried from day to day, which creates the energy that draws towards us all that are dreams and fears that may come true. This keeps us small and unwilling and unable to move. The television news, shows, and movies that play out our worst fears somehow come to life because we are powerful manifestors. What we engage in, what we watch, helps us to manifest what there is in front of us. I am in partnership with God. I am in partnership with God. That is my go-to affirmation. This knowledge empowers me to release thoughts that no longer serve me, that may be self-defeating, and focus on those ideas and experiences that feed me and inspire me. As I trust in the higher power that is always at work in my life, my faith grows and my awareness of the blessings of God deepens. The blessings of God deepens as I focus on that. Doesn't that sound good? I have a conviction of this because I am a longtime Unity student and I do the best that I can with my affirmations. This was not always the case, especially when I was young. Growing up in a Catholic environment was a very frightful time for me as a youngster. People in our church were not friendly and no one stepped out of line for the wrath of the strap or the ruler was on its way. My parents were delighted when the nuns exacted punishment the nuns were not my friends, and the unfriendly old god dude was the kingpin. I remember back in Catholic school when I was in third grade with my buddy Chris. We were in this snack line, and there was this big table of apples. And I stopped, and I went to get an apple. And from behind that stack of apples, a nun appeared with a giant habit and sneered at me and pointed down and said, only take one apple. God is watching. Well, I was terrified and frozen. But I slowly took one apple and went down the line. And as we got down there, what appeared was this giant plate of chocolate chip cookies. And immediately my friend Chris behind me says, take all the cookies you want. God is watching the apples. But that's the way it was then. God was very separate from us, and he would appear whenever the nun said God was there to keep us in line. Very unpredictable. The program equaled survival. Catholicism and the importance of it for both my parents created a muscle memory in my body just like my other automatic systems like heart beating and breathing. When young, we create reactions and ideas that may no longer apply in adulthood. Yet we play them out, not even knowing where they came from. But by the time I was 17 years old, most of my family had passed. I lost my grandmother, my father passed suddenly, and both of my grandfathers. There was no church help, there was no advice, and when I was 18, I was out on my own, no support. That was tough, and I was hungry. But there was a definite, obviously, changing of the guard that was beyond my control or expectation. I thought I had my survival skills all figured out for the way things were supposed to go. But now whatever I thought I knew was in pieces all over the highway. They meant nothing. Later, back in the early 90s, my wife Diane and I were invited by her parents to join them at a Unity Church in Sacramento. We were living in the Central Valley at the time. 
It was the church where ministers Phil and Dorothy Pearson had built. Phil and Dorothy also had a TV show called The Best is Yet to Be. We had a great time at that church. I took a lot of spiritual education classes and learning all I could about the unity, founders, and philosophy. This was very new to me. And with unity, a new revelation for me. I can talk to God directly. I am part of God and God is part of me. What? I mean, this was crazy. This was awesome. My whole life changed on every single level, knowing that I could actually have a relationship with God directly. This was so new to me. After we moved to the Bay Area in 98, we joined a small Unity Church and dedicated our energies to making it go. The Unity message was the most important in our lives. I was on the church board, and before long, I was helping to hire a new minister. And my wife, Diane, she started a choir, and she was a choir director for six years. It was an amazing time of spiritual learning and growth. After graduation as a licensed Unity teacher, serving our Unity Church for over 12 years, my heart was on fire to finish my education and become an ordained Unity minister, just like Phil Pearson. I was all set on going to the Unity Seminary in the Midwest. My bags were packed. <clears throat> then I stopped and I meditated on this move. And I listened to a different idea. And I found a, a seminary in Berkeley that had a vast, wonderful education opportunity. And I enjoyed it very much. I was grateful for the new choice and the experiences. And of course, my lovely wife, Diane, was glad that I didn't run off to Kansas City. After being ordained as an interfaith minister in 2012, I served as a chaplain at Kaiser and a church in Danville for a number of years, leading Sunday services, serving as board president for two years, and again, hiring ministers. But we are glad to be back with our unity, inspiration, and friends the last couple years. Unity of Walnut Creek is a bright light in this valley, and we can make it even brighter. With all the complications of the world going on right now, there is more external and internal need for new changing of the guard. New ideas and new visions are needed. As we change the guard of our old thoughts and move into our heart space, getting out of the mind that keeps wrapping itself around the imaginary axle over and over and over again, drawing us into anxiety, choose instead to disengage. Be good to yourself which means giving your heart what it needs to calm down. Pray. Notice that nothing bad is happening right now. Pray to your higher spirit, to God. Dear God, help me to center and get this anxiety out of my body, my system, because it causes really harsh results, which creates a new level of anxiety of that inner circus that ramps up. I call it the inner circus. If emotionally I'm not feeling well, then mentally I'm not feeling well, then physically I'm not feeling well. It's a constant feedback loop with all systems on board. We are expert at that. There are an infinite number of things that we can do that should do to keep our minds open, enjoy life, and be positively challenged. We love to be challenged, don't we? Some of you take long hikes in nature, ride bikes, exercise. Some of you may love to write your morning pages. they are great stories about our own lives. I wasn't much of a writer, only technically with my work. Yet some energetic thoughts and feelings need to be expressed somehow. And it can be done through various creative arts of different kinds. The point is to move the internal energy that is stored and builds up in the body and causes heaviness and stiffness, especially over time, if we don't move it. For years, I have engaged in creative arts to shed some of the inner mud, as I call it, some of the inner mud to manifest either on the paper or on the canvas. It cannot be put into words. Whatever comes up, whatever images, whatever colors, there's no words involved here. But it was through the creative arts expression that opened my heart to see and experience the vastness of who each of us are and also informed me that I am going into ministry. I want to carry that into ministry. 
that was my inspiration and it consistently and, kind of, and still is part of who I am. And I would like to share a little bit of that with you. This one shows the circus life that we live, always balancing from one act to another with the need for many exterior faces, depending on the situation, of course. Does this image resonate with you? Which face is the real you? Which face is the authentic you? Because we spend a lot of time deciding which face to wear in different situations, and it takes up a lot of our energy. This is a painting that I did that shows a few things about a person being of happy service. Being of service gives us joy. The water in the, in the painting represents the flow of life, the energy of life. And out of the head, the flow of God energy, which we are all made of, of God energy and stars, unlimited. The bird on the back is where the anxiety is stored. The heaviness that keeps us planted. The challenge is to knock that bird off whenever we can or whenever we're aware of it. A few pointers or suggestions to help us unitics get happier with our lives. Ways to change the guard and be more fearless. Number one, be willing to give up a few old habits. They are stuck in your body and they spread up at times that are just not helpful. Meditate, get quiet, and listen for answers. Also, be willing to create new habits. Take up something different and practice each day at the same time for just three weeks. Not a big commitment. Learn a new language, practice creative arts of some, of, of some type, draw with your left hand. Something that is interesting and engaging without the TV. The key is separating from the addiction of TV for at least a few minutes a day. That is really key to keeping up our energies. Another big thing that works for me is getting out in the sunshine. Look out and appreciate the life-giving breath and energy coursing through our veins every single minute. It's a miracle that we are here. It's a miracle that we are here communicating and supporting each other in this very moment. Recognize that. And just take a moment and appreciate it. My son-in-law has a business in Walnut Creek called the Human Optimization Center. It's a big word for they offer various methods to help relieve pain and reduce inflammation in the body. One item there is called the cryo chamber. It's like a big refrigerator. And they drop the temperature down to about minus 150 degrees below zero. And you put on your little hat and your mask and you get in there for two to three minutes. The first time I saw that, my mind said, not me. No way. I could die in there. I hate the cold. What are these people thinking? What are they thinking? Was that my outside voice? Even my son-in-law's 72-year-old mother was enjoying how good she felt after spending two and a half minutes a week in the cryo chamber. Well, I decided I was going to take charge, and I was going to get into that chamber no matter what my self-talk was going on. I jumped in with my favorite rock song playing, and behold, I found the experience exhilarating. When in the cryo chamber, your blood energy goes back into the core for a short period of time. And when you get out, that blood energy goes back out. And it feels really great. It takes care of those, the circulation, the aches and the pains and all those things that helps relieve that inflammation. Once being out and happy to be alive and feeling so well, I told my ego, okay, see who's boss now. I'm in charge, not you, at least for those three minutes. Every time you act on something that your ego mind says, no, I don't think so. Take charge. Change the guard. The practice of meditation and doing these therapies helps our natural human system to do the healing, which is magnificently powerful. Call on God, the great spirit, the magnifier of all beings in the world, the energy of the sun and the moon to help you to be willing to see the world in new ways. Only through our own individual heart work can the world change for us all. I believe it is our calling to be challenged, to grow in the world, to discover the greatness of 
who we are, moving us beyond our easy comfort. Be fearless. the high wire of life without a safety net to follow something even bigger than my pride to show up with courage even when I'm trembling inside and I will not worry about Thank you for that video to inspire us to be more fearless. God is at the heart of who we are. 
as we put our mind and heart on greater things than the world is blessed, is moved, and is affected by the manifestation of our vision put into action. God not only inspires our vision, God also enters in and supports our growth in that vision as we make steps forward, overcoming our own safe, comfy self-talk. There is a famous story about a block of marble back in the 1400s that was deemed flawed. It was too long and narrow to be valuable, and it sat worthless for over 40 years until a young man came along and saw something very different. He had a greater vision for that block of marble, and inside this massive stone, the young sculptor saw heroic beauty, grace, and wonder of a man who had become known as David. Young Michelangelo famously said, I already saw David inside. I only had to release him by chipping away at the marble that trapped him in. We can change our future as well by simply changing our vision for it. It is said that we are not limited by our abilities or by our current circumstances. We are only limited by our vision of what can be a call to be something more. When we change our inner guard, we find that God is with us wherever we go. I have another painting I'd like to show you today. This is my unfinished painting, just like me, unfinished and opening to new possibilities. The base is heavy with old beliefs and emotions. The sculptor chips away as I forgive, as I listen, and I follow God's direction as best that I can. The sculptor is helping to emerge the rest of me more completely. As I meditate on this image, there are two questions that came up to me and also for your consideration. We can't get answers unless we ask our higher power, right? The first question is, what wants to be revealed in order to support the ease and grace of a new vision? What wants to be revealed for a new vision? And hand in hand with the second question, what am I called to release in order to embrace my ultimate work in the world? Whatever it may be, the journey if taken to reach a purposeful goal, which could be a joy, a feeling, a place, is all it takes to build a new direction and a new life but we have to be willing to change the guard to look beyond it. I believe we are all part of the wilderness of the infinite flow of ideas and creativity. We're just part of it. And the art of growth begins with the willingness to open up to deep listening and the activation of our faith. We can choose to observe a dangerous and frightful outlook wherever we go, or we can choose to accept the world as a diverse, friendly place in which we can learn to interact and support each other. If one is willing to be open, then changes can be made. One small step at a time, one authentic conversation at a time to crack the door, the door of our own limiting beliefs, to open just a bit. I encourage each one of us to take just 10 minutes a day for God Radio instead of the alternatives. God Radio is in the heart. As we do ask our own hearts, what wants to be revealed and what wants to be released in order to change our inner guard of old ideas and habits to create a new vision, to create a new us in the world. One of my favorite Marianne Williamson quotes, we are born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It's not just in some of us, it's in every one of us. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. Because with God, all things are possible. Thank you.